Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Hoops Hall of Fame podcast. Today, I want to address uh, the important topic of what coaches look for in star players. We all know the season is coming up in a couple months now, so we're all working on our games. We're running, we're getting in shape, <clears throat> and we're also maybe a little nervous with tryouts or practices starting up soon. So, I want to address you know what coaches look for in star players. We all want to be the star player. We all want to be the man on the team. So I want to list some things that coaches look for in their star players. The The idea for this podcast actually came up when I was at work the other day this past week. And uh, it was, you know, it was basically, you know, what bosses look for in their star employees. But it could also apply to basketball. It could apply to many areas in life. You know, what people look for, the people in control, the coaches, the bosses, what they look for in their quote-unquote star players, star employees, the people that are going somewhere, put it that way. The first thing is they have to be multi-skilled. they got to be able to do multiple things. Obviously, you know, there's certain skills that we have in basketball, there's certain skills we have in any endeavor that we do better than others. It might be shooting, it might be ball handling, it might be scoring. But if you want to be a star player, you got to have multiple skills. The coach has got to feel that he can put you in any position. He can put you in the post. He can put you on the wing. He could have you bring the ball up and in initiate the offense or lock down the other team's best player. He's got to feel that he can put you in multiple different situations and you can excel. Obviously, you might have certain skills that are better than others, but he has to feel that no matter where he puts you, that you're going to be successful and be able to help the team in that situation. So number one, you have to be multi-skilled. This obviously comes down to working on your game, working on every aspect of your game, as you should always be doing when you're training. You should always be working on every aspect of your game, shooting, ball, handling, scoring, defense, mental toughness, everything. Number two, they're looking for leaders. Leaders by example and leaders that are vocal. So obviously you need to have work ethic. You've got to be working hard. You've got to be competing hard making your teammates better in practice by your actions, but also vocally. You need to make sure that you're keeping your teammates accountable to what the coach is looking for. The coaches will really respect that. But you should also be doing those things yourself. Obviously, you can't just talk. you got to actually be doing it. So doing it and leading by example comes first. And then once you're doing that, then you can be a vocal leader and hold everybody else accountable. And number three, you have to be a class act, meaning... You know, you got to be relatable. You got to be a human being. You got to be able to talk, not just about basketball. You know, you got to have a little bit of a sense of humor. You don't want to be getting yourself in trouble off the court. You know, not going to class, not doing your homework, messing around, going to parties, whatever the case may be. You got to be a class act. I'm not saying don't have fun, don't whatever, but you need to be smart. You need to you know, take these, the things you do off the court into consideration because you want to be a class act. A coach has got to feel that you're somebody that can he can trust, someone that he can get along with. I don't want to sound like you want to be coach's pet. You don't want to suck up to your coaches or your other teammates, but you got to be a class act. You got to be relatable. You got to be someone who everybody can get along with and someone who generally cares for everybody else and is willing to do whatever he can do to help others, whether it's in the game or off the court. And, you know, just like I said before, work ethic, working harder, being in the gym before anybody else, staying late, and just being a cleaner. This is a term that I got from the book Relentless by Tim Grover, which you guys should definitely read or listen to. If you're a serious basketball player, even if you're not a basketball player, this is a great book for having that mental toughness that we talk about so often. But being a cleaner, meaning you're not just there, you know, you're a closer. You show up when the game is tight, when things are rough, when everybody's looking for you to make something happen. But you also have to be the player that shows up at the beginning of the game, the middle of the game, and the end of the game. You've got to take every possession, every single second of the game as if it's the last second of the game. You need to be approaching every practice, every single training session every single game every single second like it's your last and you got to also be somebody that can be relied upon when the game is tight 
and everyone's looking for someone to make a play. And right now I just want to quickly touch on how you can develop these, these aspects. Obviously, like we said, to be multi-skilled, we have to be addressing multiple skills in our training program. Whether, you know, this is obviously developed mainly during the off-season and preseason, but we can still work on our game to some extent during the season. But you need to be working on all your skills, your shooting, your ball handling, your scoring moves, your defense, free throws, finishing, everything. You need to be you're working on your strength, your quickness, core, everything. You need to be working on everything in your training sessions. To be a leader, obviously you need to do the things that great players do. You need to be holding others accountable by doing it yourself first and then being a vocal leader and holding others accountable. So you need to know what your coach expects from the team and what he expects from you and be doing it and also be putting in work yourself and then you can hold others accountable. To be a class act, obviously, like we said, don't get into trouble. Be someone who is a human being that can be friendly. Be someone that other players, the coaches can relate to. And just don't get into trouble. Don't do stupid things. And obviously to be a cleaner, this comes down to that mental toughness, which is something that's developed over time, just like our skills, just like anything. But having that mindset, reading books, uh, listening to audiobooks, podcasts, just having a belief in yourself that you have worked harder, you've put in as much work as you possibly can, and you're just going to go out and play, and you being someone who wants to take that last shot, who wants to play hard every possession, and treat every second like it's the last second in the game, and having that mindset and that confidence. Listening to podcasts like this one can help develop that, but again, it's a process over time of learning, reading, and becoming a better player and a better person. All right, everyone, thanks for tuning in today to the Hoops Hall of Fame podcast. This is Matt Lehner, your host. Please like the page on Facebook, subscribe on YouTube, as always, and let me know if there's any topics you guys would like me to address as the season is coming up before we know it. And I'll talk to all of you again tomorrow on the Hoops Hall of Fame podcast.